Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be a little bit long. I'm going to show you how I paint a puppy in watercolor. Uh, I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little weird. It's kind of a flu season here in France, so I guess I'm a little sick as well. I'll also be sharing some thought process, like maybe explaining a few things that I do. So hopefully this video will be helpful to you. So the paper I'm using is the cotton watercolor paper from Arsh, 300 gram per square meter and cold press. You can see that I tape it down to a whiteboard under it. This is mainly to prevent the paper from buckling or warping later on. So I'm just doing a very simple sketch in pencil. Um, by the way, I'm using an HP pencil, which is the kind of pencil that I use for most of my pre-painting drawings. There are a couple of things that you want to pay attention to when you're drawing. First of all, and the most important thing, is the proportion. You want to make sure that the proportion is correct at this stage because once you start painting, it's usually very hard to correct it. Personally, I like to start by drawing the eyes and the nose, which um, is the center of the face. So this is kind of my first move and I'm always thinking very, very carefully when I do that because I would paint the rest of the head and the body in relation to that. Secondly, try not to draw too many details. The pencil sketch is just to give you an idea of where everything should be. So if you draw too much, you're going to end up with a lot of pencil marks and the painting will get kind of smudgy when you paint over it later on. And also always use very light pressure because you don't want to make dents in the paper. And finally, make sure you do a final check so that if you see anything wrong, you can still correct it. Most of the time, I'm pretty lazy with the preparation work, but today I really wanted to set a good example for you guys in this video, so I prepared two jars of water. You rinse your brush in one jar, and then you'll always have the other jar for clean water. I start by wetting the paper first. I will paint mostly wet on wet, and I'll explain later why I choose to paint this way. So the colors are from Sinili, and I will put the name of each color on the screen so that you can see. I decide to start with the ears. As I drop in the color, you can see that it starts to spread around a little bit. It's because the paper is too damp. I'll just grab a dry brush and absorb the excessive paint. Usually when you work wet on wet, a mistake like this is easily fixable. But to avoid this kind of problem, you want to pre-wet your paper and wait a certain amount of time for the paper to completely absorb the water. Because we want to work on damp paper, not really wet paper. Unless that's the effect that you're going for, then it's really up to you how damp you want your paper to be. I'm slowly building the first layer with the number zero brush from Raphael. I've already talked about this brush in my art supplies video. Um, it's actually one of my favorite brushes. It's amazing how well it holds the water and it's very, very soft, so um, I don't get a lot of brush strokes. But it can be difficult to work with if you're using paints that come in pens. Because of the softness of the brush, it doesn't usually pick up paints very effectively. So that can be quite problematic when you're working wet on wet because timing is very important here. You don't want to wait too long and the paper dries up. So you can see that I've changed my brush into a synthetic one, which does a better job picking up pigments. Um, this one is a number 8 brush, also from Raphael. The reason I changed my brush is not because I want to pick up more paint, simply because I want to do this faster while I still have some of those very nice damp areas that I can work on. You probably noticed that I'm not being very generous with my paints at this stage because this is the first layer and I want the first layer to be subtle and transparent, kind of light in tone. So the tone of color is like how is like the darkness or the lightness of of a certain color. Creating different levels of tones makes your painting more interesting and lively as opposed to flat and dull. I remember when I first started painting watercolor. I used to paint all the colors as vibrant and saturated as possible all the time because 
it was kind of hard to resist not doing it because all the colors the colors were just really beautiful that way and whenever i accidentally stroked a really light and faded wash i would look at it and say you know this is not that that doesn't look right it's not strong enough so i must be doing it wrong so I don't know if you guys have or had the same thoughts, um, but that's sort of something that gives your painting this soft and subtle side. And without these light washes or even blanks, you're not going to get a contrast in your painting. And then there's the exact opposite of this, is what a number of people have already told me that they're not being brave enough with the colors when they paint because they're so afraid to mess up the painting so they're just being way too careful with um, the paint with how much paint that they pick up so the result of that is that they usually end up with a flat and lifeless painting so neither of that is good um, because you want to have both the light tones and the dark tones and sometimes even um, different levels of tones because this is what gives your painting um, a sort of dimension and depth. The wet on wet or wet into wet technique is for me the most fun, one of the most fun things to work with in watercolor. It can be used to create um, a variety of objects or effects like flowers, trees, the sky, the ocean, etc. So if you're getting like a soft or warm feeling of a certain painting, um, that is usually the result of a wet um of a wet on wet work so that's why I decided to paint this little puppy using that technique because I wanted to bring out this soft and fuzzy feeling of the puppy Now that my first layer is pretty much dry, I'm starting to drop in a few colors that are more intense than the previous ones to suggest um, different colors and texture of the fur.
So I continue working wet into wet, and if a certain area is dried up before I get to it, I would just take a clean brush and load some clean water and wet that that area. So that's why it's very important to have um, good quality paper. But uh, like I mentioned in my art supplies video, the problem with the with the good quality cotton paper like Ash is that they're usually um, very spendy. So it's not <clears throat> it's not very wise to spend that much on paper when you're just practicing. So for practicing, um, you can actually you can do it on on less expensive paper, um, usually the cellulose type. And they're usually they're not as great as the cotton paper, but in my experience, they can handle probably two to three times of reworking, and after that, they'll just get a little fuzzy. Occasionally, I will let the tip of my brush slip onto a dry area of the paper to sort of form this cute little shrub of hair that's poking out. I really love that. It's so cute. For the black or blackish part of the fur, I mix raw umber and phthalo blue. No, or should that be phthalo blue? I'm not sure which one is the most um, is the correct pronunciation. But anyway, um, it can also be called intense blue. Or if you're using um, Windsor and Newton, um, you can also substitute it with cobalt blue or ultramarine blue. So a bluish color plus raw umber usually creates this very dark um, black like color. Personally, I almost never use the color black because it's just really opaque and it covers up all the rest of the colors so um or unless it's to like intensify um some of the dark spots but inconveniently most of the watercolor sets that i bought um do come in with the black uh color or the white so I usually just take that color out, like if I'm traveling because I don't want to carry excessive colors. So I would take it out and just put in another color. As you can see on the photo that the muzzle of the puppy is almost completely black. But then you also have to consider the light source, like where the light should come in, which create lighter areas and also shadows. Here I'm painting from light to dark because I'm more comfortable this way, but you can also choose to paint from dark to light. Um, it's, I guess it's a personal preference. Unfortunately, my the battery in my camera went out before I realized it, so there's a little part that's not recorded. And now I'm just adding a little details here and there before I move on to the body of the puppy.
So I'm pretty much done with all the layers and just dropping in a few uh, finish touches everywhere. Sorry, I haven't talked in a while. It's just I, I don't think that my voice is very pleasant right now with the <laughs> with the nasal thing. So, but if you have any questions, you can just um, leave it in the comments. You know that I always love to read the comments and there might be things that I forget to mention. The last thing to paint is the eyes. I switched into my rigor brush or I sometimes call it liner brush because the area that, that I'm going to work on is fairly small. So I'm going to need a rigor brush to do the detail work. I'm using burnt sienna for his eyes and the mixture of raw umber and blue for the contour of the eyes. And finally for the shadow, I'm picking up some dirty blue color from my palette, which is pretty much um, phthalo blue plus a tinsy bit of um, burnt sienna. So that's pretty much everything I had in mind for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you very soon in my next one. Bye.